Every year, the elves work overtime, but when they can't keep up, they call on toy maker Bob Whitmore. Now let's spend some time in Bob Whitmore's toy shop. Hey, well, hi there. Hello again, everybody. What a splendid time we've been having here at the toy shop. And, you know, we are taking up the slack. If you uh, were a regular uh, visitor here, oh, hi, kiddos. If you were a regular visitor, visitor here before, you know the, the problems we've had getting supplies from Lou Philpot. And, uh, of course, yesterday, uh, Lou reminded me I hadn't paid my bill, but we've got that taken care of. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call him after a while. Now, you know, there are lots of things that you, you find under the tree, and there are also lots of things you find uh, in, in your uh, Christmas stocking. Among them is marble. Now, marbles are, or is it marbles is? Well, anyway, marbles am. I'll, I'll say marbles am. I, I'd get away with that here because it's, it's radio. But anyway, uh, they're, they're fun to play with, and I thought it might be uh, interesting there to uh, to produce some marbles uh, to show you how we make them. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to head for the workshop. And uh, join me there and join in just a minute. Electric tools such as saws and drills are for big folks, moms and dads, and master toy makers like Bob Whitmore. Remember, play it safe and let adults handle all big tools. Well, hi, kids. Welcome, boy. I tell you, the next to the last to the last to the next broadcast here. And welcome. We're out here in the workshop. And today I promised you that we'd be making marbles. And I've got a little container. And the only problem with these marbles I've made, kiddos, is I don't know where I've gone wrong. Please forgive me, I'm an old man, but I have made them square. They're little cubes of marble instead of being round. But maybe if I shake them up enough, I can break the corners off. Or so. This is terribly embarrassing. This is just awful, because I promised these to... Debbie has a young friend she wanted to give them to, but I'll tell you what, I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll meet you up front. Look at, uh, let's get Lou Philpot on the phone here. Philpot's Toy Farts. Well, hi, Louis. Robert W. Whitmore here up at the big toy building there, and I've called. I just wanted to make sure I was playing the tape back of yesterday's visit with the kiddos. Well, and I, I feel guilty. I feel as if I've been retributed in my duties, that I've ignored you, that I've left you in the lurch, and the check is in the mail. Well, thanks, Bob. I haven't uh, received it yet. Well, though. I just, I mailed it. I, I Let me make sure I got the carbine here. I mailed it to, uh, to Phil Toy Parts, 232323 Measles Lane, North South Pole. Uh, or South North Pole, I'm sorry. Bob. Bob yes. That's 23... 2323 Measles Lane. Uh, not Measles Lane, Bob. No, it's not. Poison Ivy Lane. Come on now. There's no, a I'm street saying. called Poison Ivy Lane. Poison Ivy Lane. It's this new industrial park out here on the south side. Oh, we're, we're, oh we're, yeah, I know. All the streets are named for diseases. <laughs> Something like that, But yeah. I thought it was measles. No, it, it's, a, it's an old toxic waste dump. Ooh, and, well, uh, see, I wonder, over. is there a 232323 measles lane out there? Uh, I haven't seen it if there is. Boy. I'm well, afraid maybe the uh, the mail got dumped over the edge. Maybe I should put a stop payment on the check there for four dollars I mailed you. How much? Four dollars. Four dollars. So that's that's what my bill said there. Uh, I think you missed a decimal point there someplace, Bob. Maybe two or three of them. Hmm. Maybe you ought to uh, go over that bill again. Put your glasses on this time. I better call Vito, my bookkeeper, and see what I can come up with. Now, wait a minute. Let me get before I leave. Yes, Bob. 232323 Poison Oak Lane. 2323. 323. Oh, no, there's two 23s, Bob. 23. Ooh, well, I put three of them on that other one. Yeah, I noticed that. 2323 Poison Ivy. Poison Lane. Ivy yeah. Lane. South North Pole is Zip 90938. That's the one. Okay, well, thanks, Lou. Well, thanks and as we get Bob. near the big day, have a, have a, have, have a, a... Happy holiday, uh, Bob. I took the words right out of my bill. All righty, I'm still going through some of the mail. We're getting close to Christmas time now. Here's here's a letter to Santa from Sidney Lummet. Lumet, Lumet, Sidney Lumet wants a new camera, says he wants to be a film director. All right, that's about all I've got here. Let's call down to the post office. 
Hello, South North Pole Post Office. May I help you? Uh, well, welcome back from your vacation and happy hours before Christmas Eve, Mr. Liebish. Boy, I'll tell you, the excitement is, uh, it's more than I can stand. It's at a regular frenzy here. I'd have to put on 12 more seasonal employees. Listen, I, I seen your building there on the nightly news on Channel 89. Mm -hmm. and Don't they, you like the candles? Oh, they're just lovely. I, but I noticed there that there's not room for you to walk. In the post office, it's like you're on stilts. <laughs> well, believe it or not, <laughs> we are walking on a... Right now, even as I speak, yes. I'm sitting on stacks of mail. Well, now, that bit, you're going to be able to get that up to San Diego. As quick as a wink. <laughs> Look, uh, put one of your seasonal employees on there, if you don't mind. Hey, hey you're going you're gonna to like this one, Bob. All right, well, we don't have much time left. All right. Sure, I can read these. Well, Stanley C. Pearl starts off the hit parade with uh, a request from Nottingham, North Carolina. He says he'd like a year's supply of lens cleaner for his glasses. Andy Clyde of North Hollywood, California, says he'd like an entire collection of old Hopalong Cassidy books. Well, those were some of my favorite writes. And Christopher McCurdo of Antarctica says, wow, this came from a long way. Says he needs some more logs for the fire, I can only imagine. That's all I have for now. Well, gosh, another batch of those wonderful letters. Boy, time's running down. I, if we don't get through to Santa this time, I think I'm going to give up. Merry, Merry Christmas, Santa's well, residence. Well, hi, are you still talking to me? Oh, Bob. Oh, listen, I'm so sorry if I was a little short with you, but, well, I have sort of a crush on you. Well, I'm flattered by that. I just want to thank you. You know, of all the people who've been answering the phone, and good golly, you must have had 85 different people the past couple of weeks. Yes, it's been so busy. You ought to win a prize. You're just awfully sweet. Oh, bless your heart. Would you put that in a letter? Well, certainly. Maybe I can get you a promotion. You. I'm trying to get upgraded. Well, good. Listen, uh, how, what are the odds of getting Santa on the line today? Zilch. Zilch? Yes, I'm so sorry, but, you know, there he's getting all these hookups with NBC, CBS, CNN, RPN, RCA, KNY, everything. Really? Yeah, the Disney Channel's on there now. Oh, good heavens. I shouldn't have mentioned that. No, that's all right. They're not a competitor. They're just in cahoots. Oh, I see. And, and Orlando. Listen, uh, well, how about uh, Christmas Eve? It'll be our last chance. I'll pencil you in, Bob. Uh, thanks. Yeah, lots of holly to you. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, what a nice lady. Well, the next time we join you, it'll be the end of the season here. At... Oh, that's kind of sad, isn't it? Well, anyway, maybe we'll finally get through to Sandy. So goodbye, kiddos. Remember to join us again when it's time again for another visit to Bob Whitmore's Toy Shop. This is the Shrevikman Radio Network, your network for the 1988 Winter Olympics.